guys, or good evening, because you're probably watching it on Monday night. This is the Monday Night Golf Show with just myself this week. Um, Pete is actually uh, up in Edinburgh, taking his lovely lady away from a trip, so it's just down to me. I thought I'd do it with a little bit of a twist this week. I thought I'd just take you on my little journey through a day in a life of um, me really filming, doing some tips... Uh, I'm going to do a swing analysis today as well, a short game swing analysis, so stay tuned for that. Answer loads of your questions as I'm going along, um, because I think it's going to be a, quite a fun day. Um, so first off, let's start off on the European Tour. Uh, Marcel Seem won in a playoff, uh, quite an odd playoff, a German man, a Frenchman and an Englishman in the playoff. So we had Ross Fisher, who had one of the best final rounds to get into the playoff, and we had Alexander Levey. From France, all mar- all at the same score at 72 holes. So they went down the 18th to the playoff hole. And Marcel, off the side of the green, took the flag out. And even the commentator said, I don't know if that's a good thing, you know, taking the flag out. And guess what? He chips in. So just awesome. So I'm going to talk about that. It's going to be the swing analysis little uh, segment of today's uh, Monday Night Golf Show. As I'm doing it with a twist, you're going to be following me around. It's... Monday morning at the moment, I'm in my car, just about to drive to Trafford Golf Centre um, and do some filming for YouTube as well, guys, so stay tuned for all of that. Uh, On the US front, in Kuala Lumpur, Ryan Moore uh, took the lead of that two-shot win. Um, Quite a lot of big names in that event as well. Garcia was right up there, Lee Westwood was was in the the hunt. Um, So there was was a lot of big, big names out there, so Ryan Moore did fantastic. Sorry, in the European guys, they were out in China as well this week. It was the BMW Masters out in China. Um, ready, kind of coming to the end of the season for the FedEx and the race to Dubai. So uh, things are starting to really hot up. That talk brings us in quite nicely to our first question today. So last night I posted questions on Facebook and Twitter saying, um, obviously Monday Night Golf Show questions, but you've got to like the most popular question. One of the most popular ones was from Harry Hodgson. Who said, who do you think will win the first major out of these golfers? You've got Garcia, Donald, Donaldson, Westwood, and Debuchon. I'm telling my pronunciation still not great. <laughs> who would win the first major out of those guys? Um, any of them could win majors. Uh, I'd like, from, a, from a, a deep down in my heart feeling, I'd love Garcia to win one. I'd love Westwood to win one, or even even Donald. I know Donald has just switched back to his old coach, so things might he might rekindle some sort of magic uh, with his old coach. So we'll see how, see how that fares. Um, but in my head, you know, the amount of times that Garcia and Westwood have been close, I would be gutted, be gutted if they finish their career not winning a major. I really would. Uh, whether they're going to win the next major, I don't know. You know, you've got golfers like Donaldson who's playing phenomenal. Um, We'll see. We'll see. I reckon. I reckon if there's going to be one, I reckon Garcia next year. That's what I'm going to say. Um, so, like I say, what I've got planned. So I'm going to drive over to Trafford now. Uh, I'm just in my car in Manchester. It's not a bad day, even though it's a bit, a bit misty cold in the morning. It's just after seven a.m. Um, film some golf tips. Show you a bit of behind the scenes of that as well. Uh, then I've got a meeting this afternoon, which I'm going to have to attend to. And then I'm going to get all of this footage together and then blast it out for the Monday Night Golf Show. I'm aiming for a six. PM release date on this video. That's bold. 6 p.m. release date on today's video. So if you're watching this at half nine and it's still not uploaded, <laughs> sorry, I am really sorry. Um, one more question while I'm here. Barry asked uh, another very popular question on Facebook. Uh, when would you be coming out to play some golf course in Ireland? Uh, they've got some great course in the West. Without question, we would love to come and play some golf courses out in Ireland. Uh, the opportunity hopefully will arise next year um, when the weather gets a little bit better now. But I know they've got some phenomenal golf courses and we would love to come out and play there. Um, and also get up, back up to Scotland again, play some course up there. Anywhere we can really. Me and Finchy, I've got some exciting news coming up in the future. But I don't want to really share it without Finchy being here. So we will may do a video on that this week. I think he's back later this week. So guys, I'm going to get going. Cause it's getting cold without the engine on. Uh, get to Trafford Golf Centre and then we're going to do some... Uh, some tips and some filming and give you some behind the scenes footage guys we'll see you there right guys so i've arrived at trafford golf center this is uh, the driving range it's quite quiet this morning 
Uh, what a beautiful, beautiful day. Gorgeous day. Oh, love days like this. So um, I thought I'd just continue the Monday night golf show. Like I said, this is a bit of an on the road Monday night golf show. So um, I'm just trying to think what else has happened this week in golf. The big thing that came out recently was, uh, was Gary Player's statement. So Gary Player has recently come out and said it, that if he had one hour, one hour with Tiger, Mr. Tiger Woods, hopefully he gets back soon, um, he could fix him. In one hour, he could fix him. Sorry if the sun's in your way. He could fix him in one hour. I'd love to know what he would do in one hour. I really would. Um, I'd, I'd be pretty impressed if he can fix him in one hour. So let us know what you think about that, because that'd be quite interesting. I feel like Finch are doing this video in type. The kind of one one camera, one man video in. This is very, uh, it's very odd. I feel very bizarre. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the other thing as well, another Facebook question from Simon Lee. That's quite a good question, actually. With He asks, with the guys hitting the ball so much further now, so certainly McElroy's of the world, uh, bombing it out there at the moment. Our golf courses on the PGA Tour or even European Tour now that's seven and a half thousand yards, are they getting almost destroyed? Um, and what are the PGA going to do about it to to keep the longevity of the sport going? Um, well, to some degree, that question was from Simon there, Simon Lee. Uh, I don't think that the PGA needs to do an awful lot. The good thing with golf is we all play on a very level playing field, so. The guys on tour, they're all playing the same golf course. They're all playing off the same tees. If one hits it further than the other, that's their strength. That's their advantage. Some guys put better. Some guys drive it better. Some guys pitch it better. I wouldn't say the longest driver every week is winning. I would say it's a mixture on tour. I would definitely say at the moment, the guys at the top are, are, are big. The big hitters, certainly McElroy is bombing it out there at the moment. Um, but I wouldn't say that the PJ need to do anything in particular. You know, that's, that's part of the game. Um, the need to limit clubs, no. Limit balls, no. Make the courses a little bit harder, maybe. A little bit narrower. A little bit tighter. But that's about it. I like to see them bombing it far. I like, I mean, it's not hitting pitching wedge into greens. They're still hitting sevens, eights, nine irons into greens. So, uh, I wouldn't say it's a massive thing that he's doing. So, guys, I'm going to now take you through a quick, t a quick through, the, uh, through the American Golf here into my teaching bay and then uh, I'm going to do some filming and just keep you posted all the way throughout the day. What a gorgeous day it is. Beautiful day. And then we're in the, uh, the amphitheatre. Very quiet amphitheatre today. <laughs> no one's in here yet at all today. All right, guys, I don't know if you saw my uh, my review this week of these bad boys. Got the Titleist D2 and the Titleist D3. Very, very top quality drive. Look how many clubs now. How many drivers can I possibly need? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, these are these are pretty good. Go and check out my channel for those. I also test out the Callaways this week. Slight apology that I, uh, I actually got the weighting wrong in the head. My fault. Um, so I might, I might just redo that, talk about the spin numbers a little bit as well. Got the coffee machine on. I'm going to grab a coffee and I'm going to join me again through the rest of the day on this fantastic on the road Monday night golf show on a beautiful Monday day in sunny Manchester. Right guys, so Marcel Seam played this amazing shot on the first playoff hole at BMW in China. So he's on the side of the green playing against Ross Fisher in the playoff, three-man playoff and Alexander LeVay. Um, and he's got a little chip just off the green. Um, I'm going to show a little snapshot here in a minute. So he's, he's got this for three. So what he does is he takes the flag out. I mean, how confident is that? So I'm going to take the flag out. Now, normally you wouldn't... I wouldn't always advise to do that because the, the, the flag almost helps as a bit of a backstop. So it's a brave thing. So obviously Marcel was feeling unbelievably confident about this shot. Uh, and even the commentator said, I don't know if this is a great idea, taking the flag out. Well, he was wrong. Um, <laughs> right. So, fast green. It's probably a little bit longer than this shot, I must admit. Just a tiny bit longer. But he played a, 
a lofty club low with a bit of roll. I'm going to show you how to play that shot. So he had his lofty club. It looked like maybe a sand wedge. The grass was a little bit thicker than what we're on at the moment. And he just kept the handle forward in the duration of the shot. So he just kept the handle forward just to reduce the loft of the club and to get it landing where he wanted it to land and then rolling towards the hole. I've got three shots here. I'm going to try and recreate the same one that Marcel played. Um, so, shaft forward, and he just played it so gently, keeping the shaft forward, reducing the height, picking the line and letting it roll towards the flag. So I've got this shot here just a little bit right to left. So I've picked out my line where I want the ball to go. Almost I'm seeing it like a putt. Go on. Oh, <laughs> close. But see how that came out mega low and started rolling quickly, really quickly. I'm going to move that one out of the way. Don't need to hinder my next shot that I'm obviously going to get in. So, <laughs> shaft forward. Soft, gentle hands. Trying to get this ball to roll quickly with a little bit of loft. And I'm literally seeing it as a putt. She has very little height on that. Very, very little height. And Marcel's did drop in at absolute dead weight. There was no more weight left to give. And I think it's very much downhill. Right, let's go one more. This has got to drop for the playoff. Third attempt. <laughs> go on, go on. Oh, he's got it. He's only got and got it. So, who needs Finchie, eh? Who needs him? So, guys, that was Marcel's playoff chipping. Um, how to play it. Lots of loft, but reducing loft by leaning the shaft forward. Getting the ball to roll quickly. Landing on, rolling in. And that's how he won the tournament. We'll do some more questions as we go along on the tour of this Monday night golf show and uh, stay tuned. So just about to uh, get ready to film this bad boy, the Titleist 915F fairway wood. Oof, so I'm going to do that in a minute. Guys, if you enjoyed, oops, let me zoom out, the, the little bit of analysis there from Martin Seam, the, the Marcel Seam from the, uh, the chipping that he played in the playoff. How good was that? Oh, hold on. Uh, do give the video a thumbs up guys like I said this is just a bit of a new way of uh, a bit of an experiment way of doing it really today without Finchie um, trying to do it on my own we've got some more questions coming at you let me uh, let me answer another one and then we'll uh, we'll get into doing some more I'm doing like I said do some filming in between all of the Monday Night Golf Show so I can get it out nice and early for you guys to enjoy it this evening right guys so a couple of questions from Facebook Stephen asks how many events are we going to be playing in next year? Um, <laughs> the answer to that is simple, probably not. <laughs> so these are actual playing events. Now, obviously, as PGA pros, we've got the, the luxury of playing in some, some local events, even some national events, but we teach full-time. You know, it'd be, it'd be silly to try and challenge against golfers who actually play full-time as a living. That's all they do. They just play full-time. So we're going to try and compete against them. No chance. No way. I play golf because I love it. I enjoy it. Trying to actually uh, play against those guys who do it full time would be crazy. Really crazy. Uh, Christopher also asked, is there any golfing regrets? So uh, wish I'd done or could have done. Um, there's always a few. You know, I wish I'd practiced harder when I was younger. I wish I'd played more. Uh, I wish I'd actually started. Uh, probably started younger. I started when I was 11. I probably should have started a bit earlier than that. But no massive regrets, not really. I love my job, absolutely love it. I love coaching every day and uh, get to do this wonderful stuff that's on YouTube. So no, no no real golfing regrets at all. I'm going to do a little review on the 915 Fairway Wood now, guys. So go and check out my channel for that. I'll try and squeeze in a, more, a few more questions towards the end, maybe some from Twitter. Um, stay tuned. Right then, guys, so I'm just going to uh, wrap up this episode of the Monday Night Golf Show out here in the beautiful sunshine. Look at this. Has anyone told uh, the weather it's November? Um, so we're out here. Just last couple of questions from Twitter. Um, one of the questions made me laugh, actually. Nick, I think it's Nick Finch, asked, uh, have I actually signed a clothing line with Under Armour? 
I don't know why you would ever say that. Surely I've not been wearing that much Under Armour, have I? Not, not at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I am wearing Under Armour gear. Uh, awesome gear, certainly for the winter, so that's going to be great. Uh, you'll see me in a lot of it. Um, and also, um, someone asked as well about the Nike Vapor range. Uh, when am I going to be able to get my hands on it? I'm asking the same question, guys. I am asking the same question. I've been trying to get hold of it for the last few weeks. I'm really, really finding it quite difficult because I'm not a uh, Nike swoosh pro. Just finding it difficult to get hold of it. So as soon as I do, guys, you'll be the first ones to see the videos come online. Uh, as always, we thank you severely for your questions. Severely? Sincerely? We thank you sincerely for your questions on the Monday Night Golf Show. Uh, next week, Pete will be back. And I'm sure in the meantime, between now and next week, we'll be able to disclose some information about what's happening for our exciting trip. So stay tuned for that, guys. Subscribe by clicking the link down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below. And that was myself doing the Monday Night Golf Show on tour down here at Trafford Golf Centre in Manchester. That beautiful sky.